Please watch the video in high quality. In this video, we'll show how to draw lines using mesh with lines topology following the mouse clicks in Unity. We'll also show how to create multiple lines with different colors, like so. To start, I'll select the main camera and change its projection to uh, orthographic. And then I will create an, an empty game object and we'll call it mesh lines. Then under the asset, I will create an uh, empty folder. We'll call it scripts. And inside this folder, I'll create a new uh, C sharp file and we'll call it draw mesh lines. After the script file is created, I will drag it and draw it on the newly uh, created empty game object, which is mesh lines. and select the game object to make sure that the new script is attached to it. Then I'll double click on the script to open it in Microsoft Visual Studio. Inside the script file, I added a number of lines and I will go through them now. So there are two public variables. One is the camera or the current camera to which we will assign it to later to the main camera, uh, which is the only camera is used in this scene. And then the color, which the user could assign a different color for the line. And then the private variables, they are the threshold distance as a float. And this is the minimum distance and the, the user have to um, click uh, the, the distance between two points should be more than this threshold for the line to be drawn. And also we will have a, a list of uh, game objects, that's line mesh objects. And it's, 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 it's uh, contain a list of game objects. Each one will have a mesh. Each mesh will, project, will, will represent a string of lines. And then we'll have the line vertices. It's a list of vector three that contain the vertices for each string of lines. And then the line indices, which contain the indices uh, for, the, for the mesh to, do, to go through to do the lines. And then there is a Boolean is a new line that it's false, but that's become true every time a new line is drawn. And then and uh, world position, that's the, the, the represent the latest uh, point that's been clicked uh, on the screen by the user. And it's set by default to the uh, maximum available float value. And then the index count, the, 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 the number or the current index, and it's set to zero or uh, set to zero by default. In the start method, we will assign the main camera to the current camera variable, and then we will create a new mesh, and then uh, we will set the index format to 32, just in case we have large meshes or complicated meshes. And then uh, the current game object will add two components to it. Uh, first the mesh filter component and then the mesh renderer so that we could add or assign a mesh and a renderer and materials to the game object, current game object. Then we uh, assign the mesh uh, to the new, uh, so the new uh, mesh we created, it will be assigned to the game object. And then we will set the material of the game object to a sprite uh, default, but you could select something else if you like. And then uh, the, uh, we'll have, we have a list of game object and we add the current game object that we had here to it. Next, in the update method, we will check if the user click the left mouse button. If it does, we get the mouse pixel position and set its Z to the near clip plane of the camera. 
a plus a little bit uh, uh, like uh, 0 point uh, one percent of the new eclipse so that we uh, we could see the the lines within the scene and then we'll get the world position of the uh, mouse using the screen to world method on the camera and then uh, we get the distance to the end a point which we set here to the highest as a default as initial value and if the distance is uh, bigger than the threshold this threshold we set if it's smaller than the threshold nothing would happen we just get return if it's bigger then we'll proceed the end world position which is set here by default will assign the recent uh, mouse position to it and then we add the line vertices, uh, we add the current world position to the line vertices list. And then we'll check uh, because uh, later, uh, soon I will explain, we are using the lines uh, for the mesh topology. And for that, they need two indices to draw each line. So for the zero index and one index, that's one line. But then next, after that, after the second index, or if it's bigger than one, we will need to add two indices for each line, which is the current index and the index before that to create one line. Else, uh, we just add to the indices. That's for the index zero and one. We don't need to add the previous index to do a line for that and so uh, after that we call the update lines mesh uh, method here and then increase the index count uh, so in the update line mesh we get the current game object which is the last uh, game object in the list of uh, game objects we uh, initiated uh, and uh, changed here we added the current game object here and then we get the mesh out of it of that game object uh, using get component mesh filters dot mesh and then we assign the vertices uh, using the line vertices uh, that we uh, changed uh, here we added an element to it, which is the world position of the mouse. But because the mesh vertices take a, a, an array, we have to change it from list because this is a type list to array. And then we set the normals to, 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 to default for zero so that we have lines with consistent colors because different if it's different lines with different normals direction might change the the color of the lines slightly but we wanted one consistent color for all the lines within the string and then we will set the indices to be the indices to array because it's a list and the mesh topology to lines this is how we will create lines and then zero for the uh, other uh, uh, parameter and then uh, we uh, get the renderer and the material and the color and set then its color to the line color, which it's a public variable that the user could assign. Okay, the second thing we will check in the update method is whether the user uh, press right click on the mouse, right click, and if that's happened, a new line would start. And in this would call start a new lines mesh method over here. This method will check if there is a new uh, Boolean line, is a new line, which is Boolean. If, if it's uh, uh, false, uh, th that, that checking is useful so that the user only create, uh, uh, the, the new line will create it only if when the user click right, press right mouse click and there is, a previous line has been created so that prevent the situation when the user keep pressing right click and new objects and meshes keep creating without a previous line is being drawn. And here we'll create a new game object. We call it a new lines game object. And then we'll create a new mesh called a new lines mesh. And then 
the uh, will change the index format to 32 in case there is a huge mesh will need to be drawn and then the lines vertices we will set them by doing a, a new list uh, to vector 3 so that's a new list is created that's mean every uh, the previous list is being erased there is no elements in the previous list and then the line indices also we we, we set it similarly and the index count will reset to zero here. And then here we will add two components like we've done at the uh, start. These components are the mesh filter and the uh, mesh uh, uh, renderer so that we could use them to assign the mesh, the new mesh to the new game object. And also we uh, assign a material to it. And then we will uh, add the, uh, the, to the list of uh, mesh uh, game object. We'll add the newly created game object and we'll set there is a new line to true. So that's about it. This is the code. So if we save and then we'll go open the editor and press play. We can test that if I click here click here click here click here click here nothing happened and that's because i need to click on the mesh line to which the script is assigned and i need to select a color for the line so i'll make sure um, maybe i'll select red and make sure that the transparency is set to 255 and now if i click play again and test that We'll see lines are created and if I right click that's mean a new line will be created and I could change the color to blue for example and start drawing another line like so. So this is it. This is how we could draw lines using mesh following the mouse clicks in Unity. Thank you. Please like, subscribe and click the notifications button to help me make more videos like this.